Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 8 of We the Revolution. So it is day 15, we're at work again, so let's see what our colleagues have to say. It seems that the revolution is losing its breath. The situation is slipping out of the convention's control and they think that we will clean up their mess once they have finished. Dear judges of the Revolutionary Tribunal, every day the enemies of the Republic become greater in number. We are making an effort to weaken the traitors, but we are to succeed. The Tribunal must be faster and more decisive. No more shall we sentence people to prison. Enough with prolonged trials. Whenever you approach a straightforward and obvious case, the investigators will shorten the files and, according to the law of 22nd prior... You judges will be able to sentence the accused immediately after identifying them. No trial will be necessary. What? What? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. No, that's not how I want to do things. What? Are we going to decapitate people in droves now? Traitors and enemies of the Republic. But of course... Today we only have several minor cases to deal with. The Roland Sachs executed the assassination attempt. Pash paid for it. I still do not know who planned it, though. Okay. Who wrote that? Was that from my spy, I guess? What's happening now? Well, I met a lot of people. <laughs> Wait a second. He is named Jean-Marie and his... Wife was named Jeanne Marie as well. They had the same name, I thought so. So what now? Oh. Decide the fate of each defendant with care. You will not be able to take any decision back. Pay attention to who supports the defendant. Oh no. <laughs> no! I don't want that. So... 18-year-old Sylvain Beau and his younger brother Fabien, Fabien used to spend their evenings looking for well-dressed women who they would drag into dark alleys, beat up and rob. They mostly stole jewelry. We know of at least nine victims. Well, if that really is the case, then they deserve to die. We've learned from an informant that the son-in-law of General Evrard Grandjean has been appointed to lead the Department of Supply in École Militaire. Before he met the general's daughter, Boudet used to help his parents at their tavern in the city center. I don't know. Why should we hang him? Hector Pierlot, the owner of a mill, has died after a hearty supper. The victim's wife thinks that her husband was poisoned by their cook, Sébastien Chevauté. A few days prior to his death, Pierlot had prohibited a rendezvous between Chevauté and his fiancée. Oh no, that's really hard, because this is just from hearsay. This is just like, oh, the wife thinks. It could also have been the wife, and that would have been easy. I mean, that sounds so obvious, like a setup. So, what if I put him in there? Okay, 17-year-old Gérald Lucie cheated on his wife with a prostitute. Furthermore, to make sure he'd managed to fulfill his desires, he spent 25 francs on a potion made from cat blood. He told investigators that Fusty Hag told me she'd cast some spells and it worked. Ask the whore. Okay, so if I put him there... Oh no. Oh no. I can't change it. Oops. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry. Well, okay, he did wrong. <laughs> Two sergeants, Gregory Gaume and Lucien Schaub, have been stealing gunpowder from military warehouses. Whenever they manage to get hold of a military pass, they sell the stolen goods to hunters and bandits, stealing from the army's treachery against France. I guess so. A young, wealthy merchant drove his cabriolet into a storefront. Several customers inside the shop were injured by slivers of glass. The culprit did not try to run away. He was so drunk that he lost consciousness right after the incident. Oh, that shouldn't be something that you should get the death penalty for, but I guess it's also nothing that you should go free for, so... Oh well. That is so mean! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Even the least powerful deserve justice. So what about now? Oh, we're done for today? Okay, that was a 
fast day. Oh no, are we going to... No, okay. You notice a woman about the same age as your wife standing in front of the court. She intercepts you the moment she sees you and for the next few minutes you listen to a story about a husband who sells family heirlooms and drinks away their last francs. Of course, their children are starving too. Nothing surprises you until the woman concludes her story by asking you to send her husband to prison. She promises to testify to whatever is necessary as long as he ends up in a cell. Oh no. Um... So I know that this is probably bad, um, but I don't want to ignore her. I mean, threatening is like, uh, that could also be bad. This could also end bad for you if it comes out that you, a judge, are blackmailing people. So I guess it's either arresting him, keeping him in prison for a while. Maybe that would change him. Okay, this will probably backfire really hard. But I can't just ignore her. Or maybe it's just a scheme of her. Maybe she's not that poor as it's depicted here. But that would be really mean. So arrest a man and keep him in prison for a while. Uh, do I really want to do this? Yes, I do. The drunkard did not resist arrest. He was so intoxicated that he probably did not even realize who had taken him or where he was going. Halfway through the station, he vomited on the guard's trousers, which bought him a few kicks. Tomorrow, he will probably wonder why his back hurts so much and whether he was in a fight. The time he spends in prison away from alcohol should help him to understand a few things. Meanwhile, his family will have a moment of peace and his wife will be able to arrange the family's affairs. Yeah. Yes. It did pay off. Very good. What do you have on Pash? Like many others, he was profiting from the Roland's whorehouse. When you cut them off, it was decided that Pash would arrange your assassination. The mayor has strong allies, Danton being one of them, so we cannot simply attack him. We need to target his family. Pardon? I heard rumors that his daughter is in a relationship that many would consider unacceptable. She is involved with another woman and moreover, the said lady consorts with muscadines. If you use that knowledge, Pash will begin to make mistakes, terrified that the scandal could be brought to light. His allies will notice and lose faith in him. Will that be enough? Only if you gain his trust first. He must be convinced that you know nothing about his involvement in the attempted assassination. I have a plan, but first we need to do something about the whorehouse taken over by the Rolands. Why is that? Pash loves gambling. Hmm. Oh, we can go fundraising again. I think I want to do that. This is like good to heighten everyone's moods and then we're gonna send them to construct our statue again. Okay. What's this? Okay, so he spied something. It was Renard all along. An agent cried his supporter's surname just before he died. Renard, once you reveal this information, his people will struggle to stay on the streets of Paris. Is there anything to gain from silence then? Well, there would surely be a commotion in the city. People would start hunting the hidden traitors. Maybe real power would stem not from a battle, but from a silent alliance. Wait, what? Renard? That was the guy that our father hates so much because he had to sell his store to him, right? I'm confused. <laughs> In three days, officials will come to assess the progress made on the monument. Try your best to impress them. Oh no. <laughs> he won't be too happy. Oops. I can't free my body yet because I don't have enough influence points. So what can he do? He can... He's... This is like from the revolutionaries. So let's buy what they have to say. Oh well, I hope that they will stay calm. So, let's intrigue some more. Okay, the assassins who tried to take your life must have been paid by someone and everything points to the mayor of Paris. Of Paris. He is too cautious to let you attack him. You must catch him off guard. 
So that's the mayor. Oh, right, because he profited from the brothel as well. The number of success required to win. Okay. So let's choose an action. Decide who will manage the seized brothel. Let Henri manage the brothel. Pash likes to gamble and flaunt his money. We should expand the brothel's activities to include games of cards and dice. I know how much you like the latter. Commander Henri will be responsible for security. Pash must feel safe with us. If you want to lure Pash, you must do so with class. The brothel taken from Roland would be the perfect trap, but we still have to make it even more luxurious by adding gambling to the range of attractions offers. Dice, for example. As an artist, David, David will surely add a certain extravagance that will tempt even an idler like Pash, and he will not accept, expect it. Huh. So what would be better? Uh, what would be better, safety or elegance? I think I will go with David. Okay. So that's it, right? End the day. To Alexis Fidel, I have been told that you wish to have an urgent meeting and talk about the suspects of your attempted assassination. I am more than happy to discuss it. Long live the Republic, Jean-Nicolas Pache. Aha! So he caught the bait. I think this is another trial where I have to decide for death, right? I can't sentence anyone to prison anymore. <laughs> I'm sad. This is a delicate matter that arouses considerable moral controversy. What is your name? My name is Patrice Lecomte, Monsieur Le Judge. You have been accused of murder. Do you want to admit your guilt? According to my medical knowledge, Mr. Rabiot could have been poisoned by anything he had eaten throughout the day. Let us remember, we are talking about a person of advanced years. It may also have been a natural death. So natural as you claim that death curiously occurred at the doorstep of your office and you have nothing to do with it. Coincidences happen. Do I understand that you are denying it? Indeed. Okay. So he is accused of murder and adultery. Patrice Leconte, a respected 55-year-old physician residing in the Parisian suburb of Saint-Ouen, has been accused of committing a murder. The victim is Victor Rabiot, the husband of one of the defendant's female patients, Valérie. The 63-year-old victim visited the accused to discuss his suspicions. Some time ago, Rabiot was led to believe that his wife was having improper relations with the accused. The witnesses testified to seeing Victor Rabiot stumble from the doctor's office, white and trembling. He managed to take only a few steps into the streets before collapsing with horrible gurgling sounds. The National Guard patrol that arrived at the scene were the first to notice the victim clutching a broken glass containing a few drops of wine. The investigation revealed that it was probably the same wine that Rabiot drank while talking to the physician. The suspicion of murder obviously fell on the physician who by virtue of his profession has access to substances that can be used to poison wine. Provided that the physician's affair with his patient turns out to be true, we also have a motive. As we learned, unofficially, the woman did in fact pay the doctor suspiciously regular visits, however we have no evidence yet. Both citizen Rabiot and citizen Leconte are wealthy and well known among the Parisian aristocracy, which now demands a quick and fair judgment. Evidence of broken glass containing wine, Valérie Rabiot's letter to her lover, which reads, I will wait for you tonight in the usual place, your V. Huh. Well, this sounds awfully suspicious that he did it. Wait a second. So, who were the witnesses? Or, the witnesses saw him running out of the office. No, they didn't. <laughs> oh no, this is oh, this is a great start. Ah. Uh, so the evidence is her note. Yes, the visit was probably um. A course of events, I would guess. So I guess running out of the office was part of the course of events. Access to poison. Oh wait. Access to poisonous substances could have been the method, or it could be evidence. But it's nothing that sits before us. It's just on the accusation. So let's go with the method. 
Yes. Bond with the accused was probably the motive. And also... No, no, there's no witness that claim that they have a bond. Huh. Was it a course of events, maybe? It's not evidence, though. So I guess the visit was a course of events. The murder was probably also a course of events. No, it's not. It's probably a method. The respected physician was... Well, I guess witnesses say that he is, but was it also the method? We can allow ourselves two mistakes, so I guess. Let's say the witnesses, or maybe not. No, let's say the method. Yes. And the bond with the accused. Oh, okay, that's a, this is from the witnesses. Probably because she visited his office a lot. Okay. <sighs> so I think I have to decapitate him. What exactly happened on the day of Citizen Rabiot's death? He came to talk to me. I did not know what about. He was pale and tense. It seemed to be breaking his nerves. Is that why you poured him wine? Yes, I went to fetch wine and I poured some for us both. Did you pour it in the presence of the victim? No, in the kitchen. Does that matter? What was he supposed to do? Drag the guest around his house? Very well. What happened next? We drank, and a moment later, Mr. Rabiot ran out screaming and clutching his chest. Who cares why such a powerful man died? The important thing is that he's dead. Oh, we have a witness, too. Okay, let's call her in. Call in the witness, Valérie Rabiot. She's pretty young. Please introduce yourself. My name is Valérie Rabiot. For a few days, I have been the widow of the late Victor Rabiot. A note was found in a coat pocket of your deceased spouse. Are you the author of this message? And if so, who was the intended recipient? My guess is that Monsieur Le Josh expects an answer to the question of whether Citizen Le Comte was, to, was the addressee. Well, no. Then who was it addressed to? A woman. She is completely irrelevant to the case and I do not wish to mix her up in it. I shall decide what is important and what is not. Her name is Helene Bedancourt. Oh, wait, so he... So the doctor didn't have an affair, so why would he... Could she have plotted with the doctor to kill him so she could inherit something? I mean, it is... It is said that... Okay, as we learned unofficially, the woman did in fact pay the doctor suspiciously regular visits. However, we have no evidence yet. So this is just a rumor. How often did you see him? How often did you see the physician Citizen Le Comte? Of late, quite often, as I have been in failing health. Citizen Le Comte is a great specialist. Okay, so it was true. Do you think that Citizen Le Comte could have poisoned your husband? Even if he lacked a the motive, there is other evidence to support that accusation. I am sure that he did it. And where does this belief come from? He confessed his love for me and I rejected his advances. My love life is quite complicated, but I wanted to remain faithful to my husband, despite my relationship with Helene. I confided in Citizen Le Comte and now my husband is dead. Thank you for this confession. Do you wish to comment on these revelations? I do not know. I do not know what to say. After all, it was she, Monsieur Le Josh. It was she who asked me to kill her husband. What is this nonsense? Yes, I love Valérie Rabiot, and that is why I honored her request and freed her from that pig of a husband. I did it for the sake of my beloved's happiness. Did everyone hear that? This man just admitted to the murder. We heard. Murderer. A strange story indeed. Whom to believe? Citizen Le Comte has been backed into a corner. Uh-huh. Suppose I believe you. Why would the widow of Citizen Rabiot testify against you? I am the only one who could denounce her, but I love her and would never do so. Why does she want to destroy me? Each of them could be lying. Think carefully about the verdict. Oh, great. <laughs> well, I mean, he did just commit...
So I suppose he did poison him. I just want to know. That's really hard. Because I don't know. On the one hand, I mean, they consp- I guess it seems like they conspired. She asked him to kill her husband. And he did it, so he's guilty. What do you think the cause of Citizen Rebio's death was? He killed him, that was the cause. He might have been poisoned, but I would say it was Angina pectoris, a problem with his heart. Have other physicians confirmed this opinion? I could not say, and is that not a question for the investigators? As if they ever move a finger to make the slightest effort. Do people often run away during such heart troubles? I have never come across anything like that during my practice, but the human body still remains a mystery to us. Well, well, listen to this first class sweet talking. You know, it is rather strange that he ran out with the wine glass in his hand, so... Correct me if I'm wrong, but he admitted that he poisoned him. I mean, he just told us he killed him because he loved her and he wanted her to be happy. So, but now he's still trying to tell us that it could have ever, that it could have been anything that killed him. I need to look at the protocol again. It was she who asked me to kill her husband. What is this? Not yes. I love Valerie Rabiot and that is why I honored her request and freed her from the pick of her husband. He admitted it already. I mean, it is strange that he ran out with the wine glass in his hands to die in the streets. I don't know. As a physician, you have access to various types of medicines and substances which, if used improperly, can cause death. Any substance in excess can prove harmful and as a physician, I know how to avoid such cases. So you would know what substance and amount would be required to kill someone. By the same logic, every housewife and every chef are murderers for the sole reason that they have knives in the kitchen, is that correct? But not every kitchen becomes a murder scene, would you not agree? Indeed. And Victor Rabiot died from poison while visiting you. That is correct, there were people in the street who can testify to that. I don't know if I'm terribly wrong about this if this is if there's something that i missed that would make her the murderer but he said that he did it and that makes him guilty so i guess i just need to convince the jury did you have an affair with mrs valerie rabio this question insults me as a professional mrs rabio is my patient and the nature of our relations are purely medical a physician can fall in love and professionalism has nothing to do with it I see my patients as suffering individuals and my focus is on trying to help them. Maybe he examined her several times. You know how. <laughs> Ooh. Then why would Mrs. Rabiot come to your office both so often and with such regularity? I cannot reveal any details of my patient's health condition. Mrs. Rabiot is a delicate woman who must take care of herself. I don't really understand how this question just incriminated him more, but I think I need to go with it and I just have to decapitate him. Oof. Whoa! That makes me lose a lot with the common folk. But it also gives me a lot from revolutionaries and aristocrats. I mean, shouldn't the common folk be all about it because, it's because another rich person dies? Oh, death penalty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if, if I did something wrong. I'm sorry if I judged this wrong. But I hope I'm not. Was this act counter-revolutionary? No, it wasn't. What were the victim and the defendant drinking during their meeting? Wine. Is it now that they want to speed up the trials? Oh, that are the reports now less um c less thorough too because before it was like um did he commit did he confess to the crime and, and yes no and now it's just this is contra-revolutionary and one check question that was obvious because it was in the in the in the case note <sighs> I hope that it's not that it wasn't counter revolutionary, but how was it? I sentenced citizen Patrice Leconte to death by guillotine. Take the convict away. What a strange story. Yes, indeed.
Okay. Hey, I'm in positive reputation. Awesome. Finally, it took a long while. Well, the common folk, minus 15. Wow. So, bye. Oh, great. Oh, I have to take... I have to say another... I have to hold another speech. Do I want to give a speech about that? No, I don't, because I'm not sure about this. I'm gonna skip the speech. I have saved more people than you have killed with the guillotine. I hope you're eaten away by your guilty conscience for the rest of your life. I would have pulled, put you into prison, but I'm not allowed to do that. Oh, let's make it fast. So it's really apparent that the whole righteous, that the whole justice system is just is, is getting influenced and more and more like only life or death decisions. And I don't know how this will end. Oh, and it's the mayor. It is good to finally meet you in person. I am truly sorry that you had to face such terror. I wouldn't drink that tea. If I only knew the bastard behind that despicable crime. Ooh. Okay, nice. We have enough points to discover all of it. Huh. So... Yeah, of course he wants to know so bad who attacked us. Yeah, right. So, assassination, searching for perpetrators. He is withdrawn. So, I guess withdrawn calls for aggression. Only Pash can help. What was oversensitive about? So, I think the more carefree is carelessness as well. What was the oversensitive? Maybe aggression too? Hmm. You know, I think I'm trying to go with. I'm think I want to see how it ends if I choose carelessness for with a bullheaded person. Although it doesn't, this doesn't make any sense. I just forgot what what the right approach for this was. It, aggression was a mildly good. And humility was nothing, right? So maybe it's manipulation. Ah, oh, the brothel that we are handing over. It's oversensitive. Oh, what was oversensitive? I think it was humility. Yes. That's okay. Perfect. Strong. Perfect. Strong. And that was a weak argument. So I guess being aggressive is a good one. So then really carelessness must be the right... It must be the perfect argument, right? Okay, humility and oversensitiveness is a strong one. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with aggressiveness then too. Then we can do it. Okay. So I promised myself I would get the people who wanted to kill me. Who was it that dared? I will feed the guillotine with their blood. I doubt the people you are looking for are here in Paris. They have either escaped or been killed by those who sent them. You'll be chasing ghosts. Who else, if not the mayor of this magnificent city, could restore peace and order here? You are the only one who can stop the brutality that I have fallen victim to in the streets. I see passion in your eyes. I cannot help but wonder what the two of us could achieve together. These people are dead. It has already been decided. Nevertheless, instead of killing some random suspects, I would rather get the right people on the first attempt. Okay, I think we should be fine. I would not ask someone as good as you for help without giving you something in return. Madame Roland made a nice place for herself, Jean, and you will need to get your share of the profits. 
Okay, so now let's go with aggression. This alliance is something that we both need. Nobody rejects the judge of the tribunal's outstretched hand. I will not accept your refusal. Ooh, I hope this works. I will accept your hand. Ooh. Because this alliance will make a better life for us and all Parisians. Yes. Yes, we did it. Very nice. Oh, this is so awesome. Now we can go construct our statue. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you started to like me, father, didn't you? No, you have to f help me work on my statue. What? What just happened? Support the construction. Everyone works even harder when you see that your family is helping. Yeah, I just did that. Ooh, he's free again. Huh. So I think I'm gonna go. No, I can't afford that. Why is it still 3%? I just helped. Okay, so you're gonna be fighting. And what about you? So this looks like this is my place as well. The revolutionaries are here. Hmm, this is the people. Okay, so let's just put them here. Okay. Before we act, David must confirm the nature of the relationship with the mayor's daughter has with Beatrice Caron. If they are having an affair, Pash will be furious and you will help him to make that one mistake we need so much. Let Rommel handle it. He knows every dark alley. Send your guard to take care of it. We do not have to hide. David's presence should not raise any suspicions. So I guess he is good with words. I mean, he's an actor or... I don't know, but I guess... Or maybe the spy. Yeah. And so what about this? It's time for Pash to get a taste of victory and good tobacco. All in the newly created gambling den. It is time he felt safe. Okay. So we did it. We are planning. Now we're gonna end the day. And we are also going to end this episode at this point. Ooh, it's a new case. Oh, a lot of people want him to go free. But we will look at the case in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.